I pray to the divinity in him. The subject matter for this morning's lecture should be interesting, provided you pay attention. All over, within and without, whether you are insider or outsider, if you learn to train your attention, you can concentrate on the things. And if that concentration leads you to dhyana, to meditation, finally you can attain samadhi in this lifetime. Patanjali has written these sutras, not for Swami or renunciates. He has written these sutras for the people of the world, so that you live in the world, yet remain unaffected, undisturbed, enjoying peace, happiness and bliss. You see. Otherwise, it only remains a desire. We always ask our teachers, search for that happiness which we can attain ourselves by simple methods, by simple ways in life. Have you decided to do that at this point? Have you determined to find peace or happiness or bliss? Or are you searching for someone who will give you happiness, peace and bliss? The scripture says, no one in the world, not in any relationship, you will ever find peace, happiness and bliss. All the relationships go on with life. Life is like a coin which has two sides, life and relationship. But life will be not complete. Therefore, learn to understand that peace and happiness is within you. It's beyond your body, senses, breath and mind. And by having control, by having known to direct your energies within towards the deeper aspects of your being, you can attain that peace. For that you don't have to retire from the world. For that you don't have to shun, abstain from your duties, from your relationship. Of course, you will have to discipline yourself. Disciplining means not allowing yourself to be dissipated mentally through your speech and in your thoughts. There is one great something that you get through spirituality and that is called mantra. In all great traditions you will find this mantra. What is that mantra? <laughs> it is a syllable, a sound, set of words which is prescribed by your teacher who is well, who is competent, who knows you, who can understand you, who in a second can find out your internal states, will prescribe such a formula which is compact, 
which is more subtler than the sutra. For sutra, you need explanation and you need a teacher. For mantra, once you have it, you do not need any guidance. Mantra will guide itself. Let me tell you, friends, I have not yet met someone who is not lonely. I am in search of someone who is not lonely. I have met someone who is not lonely. Some people, very few people, and they are those who are liber champion of liberty, who are free from within and without both. You see. So what I mean to say, not being lonely means having a friend with yourself, the constant friend. Your mantra becomes a constant friend when you start remembering it. And if you decide to make it a friend of yours, mantra will always guide you. Mantra will guide you both ways. Mantra will lead you to the subtler aspect of your being, to the silence within. Silence does not lie within the domain of your mind. Silence lies beyond your mind. Mantra can lead you. When you start remembering your mantra, subtly, you will understand that for some time it becomes difficult for you to remember mantra. Once you have remembered, in another step you will find you are remembering it technically without feeling anything. Next step comes where you start remembering mantra and sometimes you forget, sometimes you remember this goes on. But you know, when you practice to remember your mantra in your daily life, it helps you. The word mantra comes from its root, Sanskrit root, mananat trayate, that which dispels the darkness of ignorance, which removes agony, pain from your mind, that word is with you. Therefore, all the words of all religions, all, all great religions, of all great sages are valid. All traditions here meet that some sort of confirmation, some sort of mantra they remember, some sort of chanting they do, somewhere they dance with the mantra, but meaning is one and the same. How to be constantly aware of that mantra? Guru Nanak beautifully said, he experienced that whole world is in pain. He didn't see anyone happy. But he saw people happy, those who remembered mantra nam. Same thing was repeated by Tulsidasa. It's a very subtle thing I am going to tell you. Tulsidasa in his great epic Ramayana says that if you remember mantra, even if it is not remembered properly, it will help you. When you say, my mantra being pronounced correctly or not, if you pronounce your mantra correctly, definitely it's very healthy and helpful. But if you are not pronouncing your mantra properly, even then it helps. Imitating to sit in meditation even helps. 